Fluttershy's Giant, Part 3 Twilight lifted her head up and blearily looked around, just barely recalling the events of the previous night. Fluttershy thing, she thought some more, searching for something that would indicate why she was sleeping downstairs. Crashing, uh, oh, 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 Spike! She yelled, wake up! She darted upstairs and shook his small body urgently. Spike groaned and slapped her hooves away. It's still early, Twilight, he grunted. Twilight pouted and prodded his rear again. Wake up, lazy bones. If you get up now, I'll let you eat as much ice cream as you want today. The baby dragon poked his head out from under his black from under his blanket. As much as I want, without interrupting? Unicorn the unicorn nodded. Mm-hmm. Pinky promise. She made the motion across her chest. Cross my heart and hope to fly, stick a cupcake in my eye. Spike heaved himself out of bed and climbed onto her back. Fine. He grunted and yawned. What do you need? He asked as he trotted downstairs. Well, I don't really know to be honest. I never seen or met something falling out of outer space before. The unicorn blushed as she spoke. For once in her life, she actually had no plan as to how to proceed. Wait. Spike stopped her from continuing and hopped down from her back. You mean you don't have a plan? Twilight shook her head and blushed again. The great Twilight Sparkle, prize student of Princess Celestia, doesn't have a plan. He teased and put his claw to his face dramatically. Oh, whatever shall we do? He said in a mock rarity voice. The unicorn glared at him. Spike, this is serious. I have no idea how I'm supposed to talk to this thing, let alone if it's hostile. Spike rolled his eyes and sighed. Well, how about you send a letter to Celestia? Maybe she could come talk to it. Twilight shook her head. If she did, she might, no offense to the princess of course, might take it away and have it studied. She murmured with doubt. Hardly. She's the kindest princess ever, right? She'll probably just say, hi, how are you? And that'll be it. Come on, Twilight, don't be so negative. Remember when she asked you to visit the Crystal Kingdom? It's because she trusted you to do the right thing. That was different. We at least knew something about them and Sombra. And I'm not being negative, I just don't want to have the chance to... To what? Twilight, are you planning to dissect this alien? Spike patronized her. She blushed and sat in silence for a few moments. I'm gonna go see Fluttershy now. Watch after the library with you, Spikey Wikey. Twilight teased, making kissing noises when she used Rarity's pet name f for him. Spike turned scarlet and glared at her. <laughs> Don't go starting any intergalactic wars. I have to clean that up too, I guess. She laughed and hugged him. See you soon. As she trotted to the door, she heard a faint knocking and a very quiet weeping sound. Fluttershy? She asked as she opened the door. Oh, thank goodness, Twilight. It's just simply disastrous. The girls, the Kiri my Crusaders, they've disappeared. The crying Pegasus whispered and flung her hooves around Twilight's neck. Twilight widened her eyes. What do you mean, disappear? You were with them all night, weren't you? Fluttershy sniffed and released her friend. I, I don't know where they could have gone. I woke up and the door was wide open. Twilight, last night, there was something on my doorstep, she confessed. Twilight's eyes widened any more and they would break out of her skull. What do you mean, something? Uh, Fluttershy shook her head. A, a giant bulb thing. It looked like an eye. I was, I was scared, Twilight. I was so scared. 
She whispered again and tears threatened to overtake her thought process again. It's alright, Fleshy. It's alright. Fleshy murmured and Twilight murmured and hugged her back, giving her a reassuring pat on the wings. Hmm, Twilight, you and um, oh, Fleshy I should go investigate. Spike's head through a mouthful of ice cream. I know Spike, but Flush is clearly upset. Twilight scowled at the dragon. He just shrugged and walked away, plopping down on a large bean bag and digging into his tub of ice cream. Let's let's go now, Twilight. Flush Eye stammered. Are you sure I could make some coffee if you wanted? Her friends looked over her with pity. I would hate to be as scared as she was all the time. Twilight thought. Now let's go find the girls. Perhaps Takora seen them. The Pegasus said, feeling slightly better at having one of her best friends there for her whenever she needed it. Twilight nodded. Stay, he Spike. Stay here and um, watch the library. Yeah, yeah. Spike waved a claw at her and licked his lips. The unicorn rolled her eyes at him and trotted after the Pegasus. I do hope they're all right. Flush I whispered as they galloped toward Everfree. Twilight nodded nervously as they plunged into the density of the forest. I think it went this way, Appaloom cried to our friends as they followed the trail of the large thing from last night. How can you tell? Sweetie asked as she joined her earth pony friend. It, it all looks the same to me, like time with to cockatrice. Scootaloo pointed to the ground. Tracks, she said simply. Oh. Apple Bloom and Scootaloo rolled their eyes at their friend's derpiness. Come on, let's get after it. I bet it's cool whatever it is. The young farm pony laughed and bounced along into the long grass. Scootaloo nudged Sweetie forward and fluttered after her. So what do you reckon it is then? Appaloom asked as she glanced over her shoulder. I still say it's an alien. Sweetie said and brushed a twig out of her mane. Scootaloo snorted. Sure, and unicorns can fly. Sweetie scowled. You haven't met the cake twins, have you? Well, what do you think it is then? The orange pegasus shrugged. Beats me. I bet it's awesome though. I bet Rainbow Dash would like it. It's Rainbow Dash this. Rainbow Dash that. Is that all you ever think about, Scoots? Sweetie argued. Now it was Scootaloo's turn to scowl. No, she's but, she's but she's the bestest, most awesomest pony in Ponyville. That's not true. Rarity's ten times more cooler than Rainbow Dash. Sweetie pouted. Hey, girls. Apple Bloom whispered with fear. They didn't listen. Nuh-uh, Rainbow Dash can beat any pony in a flying contest. The only thing rare he can do is make dresses. Nuh-uh, yeah huh Girls! Appaloom whispered again, slightly louder. They still didn't hear and continued bickering. Girls! Appaloom shouted and, back and backed away. The two fillies stopped arguing and looked at Appaloom and looked at what she was so scared of. Oh my... Sweetie murmured as she gazed into the cold, yellow eyes of a vicious manticore. Girls, run! came Twilight Sparkle's voice as the unicorn leapt in front of them. Oh, thank goodness you're alright! Fluttershy cried as she covered them with her wings. Just run! Twilight shouted again and flared up her horn. The manticore pounced from its hiding spot and smashed against Twilight's shield. First, I picked up the girls by the scruff of their necks and galloped them away, leaving Twilight to fight the beast by herself. Stay here, she told the terrified trio of fillies as she dropped them off a safe distance away. They nodded silently and huddled together in utter terror while their foal sitter flew back to Twilight, intending to help. Don't worry, Twilight, I'm here, she froze mid-flight as she spotted the rest of the manticore pride closing in. T -t -t Twilight, watch out! Fluttershy squeaked as loudly as she dared as the manticore crept closer and closer to her friend. Twilight glanced around and saw the rest of the pack. Oh, brother. 
She murmured and sent up a stronger shield, just as the manticore pounced. She grunted with a strain. Shang does this, not me. Their claws and tails pounded on the invisible wall as they howled with anger. One of them spotted a petrified Fluttershy and licked his lips. Fluttershy didn't notice as it swerved around, moved behind her, and opened its jaw. Suddenly, everything froze in a pale of green light. A loud creaking sound was made from the manticore's screech in terror. A loud creaking sound made the manticore's screech in terror and flee. What happened? Appleboom whispered. I, I don't know, girls. Stay close. Twilight said and teleported over to them, nudging a frozen Fluttershy. The Pegasus squeaked in absolute terror as the light intensified around them, making them all huddle together. Beep, beep, beep. A beeping sound made them all turn and see a large circular object with blue light on its tip rolling further into the light. Beep. Run. Twilight simply said. They didn't need any more encouragement, especially after the grating sound came from the owner of the beeping noise. Flush Eye spread her wings and flipped Apple Bloom and Skulu onto her back, while Twilight flipped Sweetie onto hers and they ran. They ran and ran and ran. Eventually, the thing was left far behind them in the depths of the forest. They ran as quickly as their legs could carry them to the edge of the forest. What was that? Flush Eye panted, having calmed down since they left the forest. I don't know, Fluttershy. Twilight murmured and gazed into the forest. The trio of fillies huddled together as they jumped off the back of their saviors. And you free! Fluttershy turned to them. You had me worried sick! Don't go running off like that again! No more trips into the Everfree. Not while that thing's there. She scolded. Celestia knows what else could have been in the forest. The Crusaders nodded silently and dragged themselves towards Ponyville. I'd be better get home now. Me too. See you guys later. Skilloo murmured as they parted, still shaking with fear. Twilight turned to Fluttershy. Are you alright? Fluttershy sniffed and shook her head. I, I think I'm going to go home now and sleep. Thanks for helping, Twilight. She sighed and turned toward her house. And thanks for helping me get the girls back. I don't know what I might have done if anything had happened to them. She shivered at the thought. See you soon. I hope. She quietly added. Twilight nodded. No problem, Flash. It's what friends do. She sighed and turned towards her own house. So much for making a good impression on other life forms. She muttered to herself. What spooked the manticore though? I have to look up any sources of pale green light and beeping objects. The bookworm picked up the pace with new resolve. She was determined to get to the bottom of this even if it killed her. Well, maybe not that far. She chuckled as she reached the literal treehouse's door. Spike? Where are you? I need you to send a letter to the princess. Spike groaned and rolled over. Oh, I ate too much ice cream. Sorry, Twi. Twilight snorted with disapproval and looked him over. This is why I don't let you eat as much of it as you want. Come on, into bed. The baby dragon picked himself up and wandered over to his basket, groaning and clutching his belly. Twilight's horn flared up again as she began to write her letter to the princess. There, Princess Celeste, yeah. Today, myself and Fluttershy discovered something unnerving, to say the least, in the Everfree Force. What exactly, we don't know. But we do know that it made us all run away in sheer terror. Just a heads up if we have an epidemic on our hooves. Your faithful student. Twilight Sparkle. She sighed contently as the quills scratching came to a stop. Spike, could you send this off, please? Spike groaned and rolled over again. Maybe not then. 
Don't worry, we'll do it tomorrow. Twilight smiled at him and rubbed her hooves together nervously. I hope whatever it was doesn't come to Ponyville. Who knows what could happen. As Fluttershy reached her home, she turned back to the trees. A cold wind blew across the trees and pushed some of her mane aside. It felt as if something was calling to her, wanting her to go back into the dark, free-willed forest. No, no, she whispered to the air. I don't want to go back in there. As if on cue, a low whine could be heard just inside the tree line. Fluttershy bit her lips and sent her ears back. Oh, but what if something's hurt? She danced on hooves in indecision. I really shouldn't, she thought, but something sounds hurt. I can't just leave it, can I? No, she bravely told herself. Oh, but what if that thing is still there? No, I will go and find the poor creature. Nothing's gonna stop me. I help my friends, and they help me. She trotted forwards to the edge of the forest and froze again. Oh, Fluttershy, what are you doing? She murmured and hung her head. You're no hero. That's Rainbow Dash and Applejack, and Twilight and Rarity and Pinkie Pie. I'm just a coward. A useless, shaky coward. Her voice broke on the last word, as did her morale. She sat and wept for a few moments at her own cowardliness. Then she remembered something her mother told her all those many years ago. Flush eye, my darling. You are what you choose to be. She thought about this for a while as the sun warmed her neck. I choose to be brave, she whispered and smiled to herself. Thanks, Mom. She took a deep breath and plunged back into the dark trees, searching for the one who made the low whine.